Hello and thanks for joining us on this Wednesday. I'm Michaela Johnson and here are the top stories we're following right now. Now at noon, a Conway school board rules on transgender bathroom policies and LGBTQ plus book bans. How the community is responding. Preventing diabetes. I'm Deborah Alfaron with programs that help at risk groups to stay healthy. Plus, a mother's fight for justice after her son's horrific murder. Just ahead, we have a sneak peek of the movie based on the true story of Emmett Till that has people talking. But first, we're here with meteorologist Nathan Scott on this Wednesday. Nathan, we might be seeing some changes in the forecast. What can you tell us? Good afternoon, Michaela. Yeah, it's going to be a changeable Wednesday across central Arkansas. We've had showers and storms across parts of the state this morning. There have been severe thunderstorm warnings. As of right now, there are no severe thunderstorm warnings, but I think that will be changing going through the afternoon hours. Look at this line of showers and storms rolling its way through just to the north of the metro, packed with a lot of lightning. Some good soaking rain for a brief amount of time, but also there's been some areas of some small hail. You see that racing its way off to the east. So Greenbrier, you're next in line. Searcy, look out. This line is headed in your direction probably in the next hour or so, and it could bring some gusty winds along with it. There's the hail now detector. Could be a little bit of piece sized hail into parts of Conway County, but let's stick through time here because everybody needs to stay weather aware through the rest of our Wednesday afternoon into Wednesday evening. As as we'll see not one, but looks like two lines of storms developing and any storm could be strong, possibly severe. It's all out of here by late tonight and into early Thursday morning. Here's the latest with the severe weather risk across the state of Arkansas. We're under a low risk from the metro all the way down to El Dorado. The main threats are gusty winds and also storms producing hail. I'll have another look at the radar and let you know what to expect as this cold front makes its way through what we can expect for the rest of the work week into the weekend coming up. Thanks, Nathan, and we begin this half hour with a developing story out of Conway, where less than 24 hours ago, the school board voted to issue new regulations on bathroom use and overnight hotel stays based on a student's sex assigned at birth. Hundreds expressed their opinion leading up to the vote, and THV 11 Sarah Herbakowitz has reactions now from parents and legislators. All in favor say aye. Aye. A mixed but strong reaction in Conway tonight as the school board votes to restrict bathroom use by birth gender. It makes me feel sad because I personally know many transgender young women and young men, and I know that the, the difficulty of their journey. Conway resident and mom Linda Tyler is hoping for change. And I think that implementing policies like this puts barriers and boundaries around inclusivity and diversity. As are some LGBTQ members that protested out of the meeting after the vote. But many of the people who showed up and what seemed to be the entire school board say they're proud of the decision. And so is State Senator Jason Raper. For the first time in my entire representation in the Arkansas Senate have I ever felt led to come and speak at a school board meeting. I am proud of these school board members for doing the right thing. On top of the bathroom restrictions, the board voted on the same gender guidance for overnight hotel room assignments and also agreed to ban a few books that discuss LGBTQ romances, deeming them inappropriate. But for many, the conversation doesn't end with tonight's vote. I signed up to speak next month, and I intend to continue to be a part of this community and to speak out. There are still plenty of unanswered questions this afternoon, inclu including no clear answer for whether any accommodations will be made for transgender students who need to use the bathroom. Now, as we learn more, we will keep you updated right here on THV 11 and THV 11.com. We turn now to the avian flu for around a year and has been impacting the country. Now it's in the natural state and the Little Rock Zoo is taking steps to protect their flock. Today the bird exhibits are empty after zoo officials brought in their birds to keep their domestic and exotic birds safe. With avian flu, Dr. Sarah Stoneberg with the zoo says the birds we primarily think about being infected are poultry and waterfowl, which make up a lot of what the public will see at the zoo. But what we don't think about are the exotic birds, which are at the zoo as 
as well. Stoneberg says avian flu can affect multiple different bird species. Now, as we first reported, the Arkansas bird flu cases, bird flu cases came out of Madison County. The zoo decided to move all of their birds in a part of their protocol to keep them alive and well. So with the confirmed cases within Madison County, um, the zoo has taken to our action plan for avian influenza to withdraw our birds for their safety. Um, it's within about 150 miles within the zoo, um, and we are monitoring the situation very closely to make sure that the birds aren't infected here. The Department of Agriculture wants all flock owners to follow their own safety protocols. Avian flu is deadly to most birds and highly contagious from bird to bird. It can be transferred between birds and humans, but that isn't common. In a THV 11 update, multiple people are fighting for their lives in a hospital bed this afternoon after a shooting in Little Rock. Right now, Little Rock police are investigating a shooting that left at least two people critically injured. The shooting happened in the 2400 block of Booker Street. Now that's a block off Asher near Roselawn Cemetery. Police tell us there were three total victims. As of now, there are no suspects being named in the shooting, but of course we will continue to follow this and bring you any updates when they come. The city of Jacksonville is working to stop violent crime after a fourth homicide this year. The latest happening this past weekend at the Willow Bend Apartments. Mayor Bob Johnson says they want to open a real time crime center, a space to track crime as it happens. He says the system would use cameras around the city to keep an eye on any issues and also could let them detect gunshots. While this may not solve everything, it's a start. And we're making an impact because what we want is to make people that want to be troublemakers uncomfortable in Jacksonville. Johnson says that system could cost somewhere around $250,000. This afternoon, we are also learning the names of the victims killed in Friday's deadly shooting spree in Conway. Corey Bartholomew and Aaron Wright died in the shootings on Friday night. Meanwhile, 25 year old Drew Thompson is fighting for her life this morning. Prince Michael Ajatun Moby is the alleged killer. However, he died over the weekend after a self inflicted gunshot wound following a police chase. And we have new details this morning about a fire we have been following since yesterday evening. The fire started at the Goldman recycling plant where a pile of metal and baby wipes was among the items to catch fire. Officials say it was burning for about four hours and started when contractors tried to remove the metal Tuesday afternoon. When they moved the metal, it threw sparks, igniting some of the other material around the plant. The fire is out now. Now we're told the debris was sitting there for over a year since last year's explosive fire in September. Little Rock Fire isn't sure why last year's debris sat there so long, but said insurance investigations could have contributed to the delay. And with fears of a recession on the rise, the International Monetary Fund has downgraded its world economic outlook for 2023. It's now it now projects the global economy will grow just 2.7 percent down from the 2.9 percent it estimated in July. It projects the U.S. economy will grow just 1 percent next year. Baltimore prosecutors dropped all charges against Adnan Syed for the 1999 murder of Heyman Lee after additional DNA testing ruled him out as a suspect. Last month, the judge overturned the conviction, releasing Syed from prison after 23 years behind bars. His case gained notoriety with the hit podcast Serial, which raised questions about how it was handled. The rhetoric between the U.S. and Russia is heating up even further. President Biden made more comments this morning regarding Russia's war in Ukraine. Serena Marshall has the latest, including the Kremlin's response. Leaving the White House, President Biden blasted Russia this morning for its latest assault on civilian infrastructure in Ukraine. It's beyond the pale. The remarks follow an interview with CNN where the president sent a pointed warning to Russian President Vladimir Putin over his possible use of nuclear weapons. He, in fact, cannot continue with impunity to talk about the use of a tactical nuclear weapon as if that's a rational thing to do. The mistakes get made and the miscalculation could occur. No one can be sure what would happen and it could end in Armageddon. In the interview, President Biden also said he believes Putin miscalculated the invasion of Ukraine significantly. Today, the Kremlin fired back. In a statement, they called the president's interview harmful and provocative. 
Ukraine says since Monday, more than 100 Russian missiles have been fired on the country. At a meeting at NATO headquarters Wednesday, U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin said the attacks have only deepened the resolve of Ukraine and its allies. The whole world has just seen yet again the malice and cruelty of Putin's war of choice. We will continue to boost Ukraine's defensive capabilities for today's urgent needs and for the long haul. The attacks followed a blast over the weekend on a strategic bridge connecting Russia and Crimea. This morning, Russian intelligence services said eight people have been arrested in connection with the explosion. Serena Marshall, CBS News, the White House. Ukraine has asked G7 leaders for more advanced air defense systems. Now it received the first of four shipments from Germany, and the U.S. says it's also working to speed up the delivery of its advanced air defense systems. Well, it's Hispanic History Month, and health providers are focused on improving health outcomes in the Latino community. A special health alert in just six minutes. Nathan? And the clouds are moving in from the north and northwest. In fact, storms are about to approach you folks in Conway. I'll have a live look at radar and talk about our severe weather potential through the rest of our Wednesday coming up.